So this is Jim Gavigan today with Katie Ellis and Philip Babb for version two of this. Um, we've actually sent out privately a few to a few people the uh, first version of this, but uh, Philip made some pretty drastic improvements, and I really hadn't gotten around to the major editing. So he was like, you know, shouldn't we just reshoot this because I've done a lot with it? And I said, yeah, we probably ought to. So this is version two of variable speed pump curves that uh, Philip and Katie did for one of our customers. And I'm gonna let them take it away from here. I'm going off camera and putting it on mute. So you guys take it away. The customer originally asked us to find a way to display variable speed pump curves. So curves for some pumps that are VFD driven um, where the pump curve actually varies based on the speed and the suction pressure find a way to display that live so that the operators and supervisors can see how things are actually running at any given time. They had been using an Excel sheet, which was pretty much limited to the engineers being able to use it. Didn't really have a good way of displaying this information when you know we were originally tasked with this. Uh, so Philip and I thought through some different uh, ways to display the data. Originally, we were talking about doing kind of a table in AF, which is kind of how you normally draw a pump curve, right? You have a static table and you maybe put a dot showing where you're currently operating and that curve always stays the same. Well, since this pump curve actually varies based on both the speed the pump's operating at and the suction pressure, we couldn't really do that because the curve literally has to change each time that that moves. So we tried the static table, that didn't work. We tried a few different versions of the table. So like stepping it through the table and selecting you know, which band it should operate in kind of based on the speed, which wasn't quite good enough either. Philip came up with a very creative way to solve this problem so we didn't actually have to rely on an AF table or anything else but we'd even gone so far as to talking to our coworker Nick about hey could we build some custom code to write from an analytic out into you know something and then have your code write it back into an AF table because that's just kind of how we're so used to seeing this information displayed or using this information is put it in a table display it in vision as an xy plot so with that, I'll uh, let Philip show what he came up with. It's really cool, and I think it's going to be something a lot of people are going to be interested in. Thanks, Katie. Yeah, so this screen right here that we're showing is a screen that's built on our, our uh, dev server. So all of this data that, that you're seeing here is, is being randomly generated. Um, and so if there's anything that looks slightly weird, that's the reason. Um, but without, you know, having to show any customer's data, uh, we thought this was the best approach. Now, as Katie mentioned, this went through a few different iterations. <clears throat> what you're seeing right now is, is the final iteration where we've been able to give the customer a historical preview of their uh, pump curves as it changes over time. So kind of the, the first breakthrough in this process was we were writing data to the same uh, attribute over the same period of time um, because Pi is really good at displaying time on the x-axis, but it's not as good at removing that from the equation. So the original iteration of this would rewrite this curve, but it would always be writing it across the same time range. So we never were able to actually look back into the past. Um, and so we came up with this metric down here, which is basically at any given point, how far are we from this ideal curve, this pump curve, which would be our, our operational data here. You can see some a cluster of data points. Um, so the second iteration of this has been uh, finally figuring out how to give this current history. And so if I click back uh, 10 minutes in time, I can actually see, again, this is randomly generated, but this curve shifting around um, as it would have changed as these uh, the suction pressure as well as the variable speed of the pump has changed over time. Um, and so what we see here is the exact pump curve um, given by the pump manufacturer, right? So we've taken the equations the pump manufacturer has given us 
and have been able to calculate exactly what this curve would look like for these input variables. We can calculate it exactly how it appears in real time. But we can also give the customer history of what that looked like a year ago or yesterday, right? And kind of the idea here is that we want to be able to see over time how our pump is performing. So um, even with history, we still can use this metric down here just as a different way to visualize how our pump is performing, right? And so, you know, it, it was actually pretty interesting to see, looking back at historical data for the company we built this for, uh, times where we knew that they had pulled pumps either for maintenance or to replace them, we could see the, you know, this metric and, and this plot, you could see these operational data points start to uh, drift away from the curve over time. Um, and, you know, this metric down here would build up to a certain point. Um, and then you, you know, see it drop down to zero when they finally pulled and replaced the pump. And then they'd start again. Um, and so this gives us the ability to, you know, monitor the pump, set alarms, for example. So if we are approaching things like that, we can, you know, take action. Um, but yeah, just a, a really interesting application within AF. This is all native to AF, so there's no um, additional tools being used. And yeah, this is very, a very uh, tricky problem to overcome. Again, like removing time from from the uh, equation, but also inherently using it. Um, it's kind of a weird thing to wrap wrap your mind around. But this is kind of the final product of of this. I would say month long foray into this problem statement. I think it's also very interesting that. I mean, in theory, you would think you could see a pump drift off of its curve, mm -hmm. right? And say, okay, there's something wrong with it. Right. Well, you actually saw that in practice. You could actually literally go back to when they had pulled the pump out of service and replaced it. You could see that step change in performance. Mm -hmm. And very quickly, you could give the customer a heads up that, hey, this pump is starting to fail. You need to make sure that the spare is ready, crews are ready, production's ready for us to take this down and, and do something. Mm -hmm. And I think that's super interesting. To me, that's just from a business standpoint, that's what really matters here, right? Right. I mean, it's awesome that you did this technical challenge and, you know, hey, we now know how to do this, but there's some real money potentially behind this. Right. And I think that's what's super interesting, you know, to me about it. And, and I think why I'm, I really wanted us to <laughs> come back and reshoot this. I thought that was a great suggestion yesterday was, shouldn't we yeah. reshoot this with what we now know? Because we didn't have the history of the pump curve. Like, where was it on the curve? That took you a little longer to find, figure out. And something, I think when we first shot the first version of this, you weren't sure that you were going to mm -hmm. figure it out. Right. And uh, I don't know, it kind of hit you not long after that. Oh, I think I know a way to do this. You know, one of the, the challenges I see with this, though, is, and, and you probably see it at that customer, how many other pumps do they have that have enough instrumentation for you to be able to put it on the curve? Right. I think that's one of the big problems we see in industry is no one's thinking about this and the instrumentation isn't even there to be able to do this. There's a lot of people that are like, oh, I want to do that. And then you go look and the only thing you have in a Pi system is that it's running. Mm -hmm. You might have the speed, right? but you certainly very often do not have suction and discharge pressure, you know, which yeah. are some of the things that allow you to do this right here. So that'll be the big challenge yeah. for a lot of people. I mean, it, you know, if, if they don't have the variable pump speed, then, you know, we don't, I think that was also kind of what threw the wrench in this to begin with, right? Was like, Hey, we're not, dealing with the static curve anymore right it needs to be dynamic that was the first time we had come you know had a customer say you know our pump curve changes and it changes over time and we need to know yeah it wasn't really my field of expertise either i had no idea that it would change over time right you know and i think yeah. i think you could do this with fans too probably yeah. you know i think i think about you know the power plant um that you work with right and mm -hmm. jason's problem yeah. Where you changed a bunch of the ductwork around and, you know, people were saying, hey, you, you messed everything up. And mm -hmm. if we could have put 
the pump the, the fan curve you know on the screen to say here it is right here I think right. he very quickly would have been able to show them it's not me yeah and so I think this has a lot of application as long as you have the instrumentation and I and I think that's something as as the customers out there really need to kind of think about is do we have the right instrumentation could we even do this mm -hmm. and if if we could hey we know someone who can do this now because <laughs> right. katie i think you had even looked you know pi square this had been asked a, a number of times and yeah this is a very frequently asked for thing uh right. these dynamic curves in um within vision natively there's a lot of people asking for that functionality and it's that we could find had not been addressed anywhere we found little tidbits here and there in some posts and kind of pieced it together um with a couple different things and we're able to figure it out but nobody's really been out there and said hey here's a white paper on how to do this and certainly aviva hasn't right yeah, and, and no yeah, offense and it gets to, asked for a lot. Yeah, no offense to anyone asking, you know, one of the things we did not want to go over was how Philip figured out how to do this because yeah. that was pretty yeah. significant effort and, you know, mm -hmm. no offense to anyone watching this, but that's not really something that we want to give away when we work this hard to, you know, gain some kind of knowledge like this. Mm -hmm. You know, this is definitely not something we want to give away. Um, Philip spent, you know, a bunch of time on this and, right. and hard earned time. And, um, but yeah, it's, it was not trivial, it, you know, by any stretch of the imagination. Philip, I'm super impressed. Katie, you know, mm -hmm. this is, this is really, really good, you know, and, and I appreciate you guys keep, you kept pushing through, kept asking questions, you know, kept asking yourselves, can we make this better? Mm -hmm. And, uh, that's really kind of the spirit I think I want us to embody, you know, too, is can we not only meet but exceed the customer's uh expectations and I, I think the customer is super impressed with what they saw mm -hmm. i think they were kind of stunned yeah. actually that it could be done you know they mm -hmm. they ask like i think it should be able to be done i don't know if it can and so i think they were even right. super impressed with it from what i recall. yeah yeah i mean the, their response was essentially we need to make sure that this is in front of all of our our pumpers right um mm -hmm. and that they know this exists so that they can reference it and, and make sure that they're running their equipment properly. Yep. Yeah. Yep. And you and built, so, sorry. No, go ahead. And you built them a little like dashboard that kind of showed at a glance, mm -hmm. like what all the different pumps were doing um, with like the distance from ideal, as well as like what the speed and everything was and some flagging. So they could kind of go and look at it at a glance and then, mm -hmm you set it up as a collection, right? So they could go and switch from pump to pump. Yes. Like, and see the full details on everything. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah, so, you know, I think as a company, and I'll <clears throat> give Jim and Ben credit for this for teaching me, um, but just kind of the approach of you start kind of macro and, and you give someone a bird's eye view of everything that's happening. Um, and this, what you're seeing here, would be kind of a second level down, right? You want to look at an individual pump more closely um, and, and see what's been happening over time. And I, I do apologize, I didn't have now clicked, so this is generating a new curve every 10 minutes. Um, but So we should see an update actually here in just a second, um, whenever this time goes to 1.30. Um, we got 30 seconds. It's a... Uh, Vision's a little bit behind from AF, so may or may not happen to exactly 1.30. Um, this could obviously be configured however the user wanted, if they wanted to curve every 10 minutes or every day, uh, you know, every 10 seconds, for example. Probably wouldn't so, do that, though. I, I wouldn't that'd do that. That'd be a little overkill. Yeah, you could do it if you wanted. In this case, on our dev server, we don't need to be storing that much data, so... Right. All right, let's see if it does it. There goes it exactly. 30. And actually, what you're really seeing is the vision plot I'll, I'll, for the XY is, is doing an offset. So we've passed that time range, and now we have a new curve, which is the real kind of mystery. 
And this is probably why you wouldn't want to redo it that often. Right. Right. Is because it does get a little funky there for a, for a second or two as it's redrawing because of the time aspect of it. Yeah, it's like you, I can't... I think it's just the quirk of Pi. Like I, that last data point always wants to connect back to the first connect. one yes. for a moment. Always. Um, yep. Very annoying, but... It's. I think that's just a another pieism that we'll probably never get away from. So. Yeah. Yeah. Probably. Yeah. Looks good, y'all. Super, super, yeah. super, super awesome. So. Good job, Philip.